of Christ shines on those faces that are gathered just a little more than at 11. As the sun is going through the same glass, it just gives that resemblance of the, the glow of Christ on each of the faces. And so we're going to have to try a little harder at 11 to just make sure our glow is on our faces. One of the faces, Rupert, you are you. Uh, brought light to my life this morning as he remembered his sport. Um, and, oh, we have some others as well. <laughs> the expectation that we will tune our hearts to Christ today and continue to do so. You will get to use these sports in two weeks as our youth are preparing a worship service for the 21st. Um, so feel free to bring them back at that point. Um, but we are excited to be in worship and let us prepare our hearts as we go to God in prayer. Lord, we are grateful for your presence. We recognize that as we gather in your name, we can see you on each other's faces. The way that we share with one another, the way that we encourage is from the love that you have given us. Let us worship you this day, Lord. Let your presence be known to us in such a way that we receive you and share you to your glory. All that we do today, in Jesus. He came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to, to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Amen. Thank you, choir. It's been a little bit since I had one of my, our prayer partners join me in, in my office just 15 minutes before the service. And as Mary was much distracted, I feel much distracted by our worship time and the sense that there are sometimes uh, noises coming that should be coming from the speakers. Um, so I was grateful that this morning I had a note on my table in the office and uh, it said we were aware that you had to return the tuning fork and so here is one for yourself. Uh, so I'm hoping, Ronnie, that I can be in tune with God a little more as we begin the service. So as the song you all shared with us, let us be in prayer. Lord, help to remove the distractions from our hearts and from my own as well as we do our best to focus on your word, what you have shared and what you would like us to hear. Use my words, but more importantly, let it be your voice that comes through. Help us to better understand what it means to be present with you and to be the presence for others as well. Guide our hearts this day, we ask for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be present and be the presence. I know for some it's pretty easy to understand that part, first part is, is to be present. And we know how difficult that is. We all have, or a lot of us have cell phones that distract us quite often from those around us. And to be fully present with others in the room, we need to turn those phones off and give our undivided attention to whoever's speaking. But then to think about what does it mean to be the presence? We are the body of Christ. And how are we to do that with each other? This scripture that I read just a minute ago from Luke is one of my favorite scriptures. It's one of the great stories of watching Jesus interact with his friends. Ones that he was close to. And to see how he shared with them and had the expectation that they would be present together. Well, I have to admit that I had this sermon, I preached before, and I did really well, um, but I left it in the folder, left it in the box, I have not looked at it for a few different reasons. One, I like to be creative, and know that two, I want to make this a sermon for Loganville first, and not my previous church. But three is, I did so well on that sermon, that a lot of the Marthas in our church came up to me after the service, and in the next week, and then the next week after, and said, you know what? I loved your sermon, and it's time for me to be a Mary instead of a Martha. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, great, faithful individuals in our congregation that were doing incredible ministry all wanted to sit at Jesus' feet, and that left me to care for some of their Martha service opportunities. So I'm going to try not to do that today. There's a different message, a different one that, as I was preparing for coming to Loganville, one of the preparations that the timing just worked out really well, is there are eight of us clergy that are in a special ACE group, is what uh, is, we're called, ACE2 group, and it's an opportunity for clergy to, to write their own continuing ed and to meet with people they feel is necessary. And so we had the opportunity to travel to Seattle, Washington and look at Dinner Church, a new idea for worship that uh, goes outside of the typical, we sing songs, we praise God, and it's a way to build relationships with each other and to develop a deeper relationship with God. Part of that experience was to study with Leonard Sweet. He is a professor that actually uh, is a professor in six different colleges, if you can believe that, or seminaries. And he goes from one place to the next, flies all over the country. And we looked into whether he would be available during the time that we would be in Seattle. If we could just have a few minutes of his time. Well, it ended up that we had plenty of his time. We started out on Friday evening and went all the way till Monday before he had, off, had to head off for uh, teaching. And it was an incredible experience of, of just being in his, his presence and learning from him. Uh, one of the books he had us read was Tablet to Table, something that I've given to several of our leadership as well. 
And he helped us to understand a deeper meaning of what it means to be in community with one another and to understand the scriptures and to read them with another lens, a sense of understanding even more deeply what was taking place. And so it is part of what has come out of that is that sense of where we have moved from the tuning fork and thinking about tuning our hearts to God, that today I want us to move in the direction of forks, a dinner fork and a serving fork. Many of us in this room love getting together and, and being in the presence of Christ where two or three are gathered and we feel like Mary, that we can enjoy and savor that relationship with Jesus through our relationship with each other. But there are others too that do just as well in serving others, serving God through serving others, and the serving fork comes to mind as well. Since I continue to be enlightened by Scripture and those that study it so well, I am aware that what I preached a few years ago was an idea that we needed to move from one to the other. Now, there are some of us that are good at that. As a pastor, I feel I'm good at both serving and using a serving fork, but also dining with Jesus, being there like Mary, and just enjoying the presence of Christ as well. That I can do both of those. But maybe some of us can't make that transition, and maybe it's something that we need to look at the Scripture and see, what is Jesus doing here? Because on the surface, it looks like he's telling Martha, you need to be like Mary. But maybe there's something more here, because if you really look at this, Jesus values both Mary and Martha. Jesus values their relationships as friends. This is where they, are, they live in Bethany, and this is a place where he calls home, and a place where Lazarus lives with Martha and Mary as well, and they love being together. Jesus needed this time because he was about to go to Jerusalem and begin a journey that he would confront many who didn't like him. But he knew he could be around Martha and Mary and just soak up and enjoy their presence. And so you get this dialogue between the two of them where Mary is upset. She is distracted by many things. And some of us go, well, yeah, you know, I'm distracted by my phone, I'm distracted by what I need to do for lunch, and so forth. No, this is a deeper meaning of what it means to be distracted. Distracted in things that were important in the time. The meal that they were having was part of a seven-day meal called the Festival of Booths. It was a time of celebrating God's dwelling with the people. And dwelling in their harvest, and dwelling in the coming together around food. But the most important part was celebrating the dwelling, the presence of God. But Mary was getting distracted as one of the hosts, as one who knew what her role was, was to make sure all these meals were taken care of. I mean, think about Thanksgiving. Those that help get prepared for Thanksgiving, there's a lot that you have to do. And it has to be done. And Jesus recognizes that. But there's a part where you see Jesus is almost saying, that is all important, Mary, but not as important as you. Hospitality is important, Mary, uh, Martha, but you as hostess is more important to me. Your presence means more to me than the food. I can fast if I need to fast. Think about it. Jesus didn't have to have a meal. But he did need to have that companionship. He needed to have that time with his friends that he could gather from them in their presence just as much as they were from his. So when Martha is distracted and she says, don't you care, Jesus? I mean, just think about that for a minute. Here's Martha asking Jesus, do you care? The one that we have come to know and love is the one that cares so much. But then to go a step further and say to Jesus, Tell her to help me. Sounds like one of my children. <laughs> when they think they're doing everything right and they say to, their, uh, to me about their brother, tell him to do it too. Can you imagine? They must have had a pretty good relationship that Martha could say something like that to Jesus. But she does. 
And Jesus responds with, Martha, Martha. As if for us to understand they have a relationship that she can, he can just say it just a little more to her, repeating her name to almost call her back to the relationship that they have together. So only one thing is, is, is important. Only one thing is better that Mary has understood and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus is reminding Martha about the joy of being present with Jesus. But for Mary, we know that means just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And some of us get that privilege quite often. As a father, I get the privilege of coming in and being with my children and just loving on them and playing with them. Uh, it's my wife, Kelly, who gets to be the Martha. She's been getting ready for the last 24 hours for the boys to go to Camp Glisten. And for me, it's just like, hey, put in a swimsuit and they're going to have those counselors loving on them. They won't need a thing. But she knows all the details that need to go into that. And, and, and there's a sense of, of the joy of doing that for our children. That I think Jesus is trying to, rem to remind Martha as well. <coughs> that there is joy in serving Christ. In serving those that have come together for the meal. How important it is for this. And Jesus leads this time with Martha just as much with Mary. And I can imagine that there are certain meals that Martha has prepared for Jesus that one day when we get in heaven we'll get to ask Jesus, what was your favorite dish that Martha made? I can imagine that Jesus really appreciated what she did for him. But even more so how much he needed his friends in that moment before he would go to Jerusalem. So I think there are times as Christians, as followers of Christ, that we need to be present with Jesus. And sometimes being present means just putting it all to the side. And other times it means actually serving, but remembering the joy and the delight, like I talked about last week, the delight of the law, the relationship with Christ, that it should be joyful. It should be something that we celebrate together. I believe in a moment that we're going to celebrate communion. One of the two sacred practices that we do in the Methodist Church. The other one is baptism where both we believe the presence of God is a part of what we are doing. It, the very presence of God is here. And so if, if we are invited, opening ourselves up to Jesus being present in the elements that we'll receive in a minute, shouldn't we too be present? Whatever way we can be present. I've changed things up a little today. The servers will come and receive first before everyone else. I know it's been the custom in this service for those that are serving to receive communion last. But as I thought about this message this week, I thought about what's taking place. We need to be present for Jesus. Even as servants like Martha. We need to receive from Christ. We need to receive that joy that we're taking in, this bread and this juice, and receiving the joy that makes us a part of the body of Christ so that we may be present for others, so that we may be the presence for others, that as we take in Christ, we become part of the body of Christ so that we may be that for others. So I thought that was important for us to have the servers receive it first. Because otherwise, it's kind of like, well, you know, everything that they've been feeling all week long, all the, the, the good and the bad and the ugly, all that mixed in together, as they're serving Jesus to us, they're like, here, take that. I haven't had it yet. Y'all go ahead and have it. Instead, it's like, no, I've experienced the joy of Christ in my life. I've experienced the delight of being present with Christ. So here, take this. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Share this with others. So we'll do that a little different this morning. To receive from Christ first for ourselves and then share it out with others. As I've hopefully been able to help you see that we're tuning our hearts to God and now we're transitioning into not only tuning our hearts to communion with God but also with one another. And there will be in a couple weeks where we tune our hearts to our community and to our world. 
But just for a minute, I want us to focus on this communion and that as we receive it and receive the joy and we share it with one another, it's not just for us. It's not just something selfish we take in and go, ah, oh, I feel like a better Christian now. It's more than that. It's more of being the presence for others. There's a familiar story that I heard this last week, one that I have continued to hear throughout my ministry, one that affects many, many of you. Someone was sharing with me that they said, you know what, I love this church. I feel the presence of God when I come here, and I, I love being here and worshiping here, and I love serving in whatever way I can. But I have to tell you about my loved one. They don't ever come to church. They don't ever darken the doors of this church. There's some lament that they were sharing with me, and I thought about it as I was preparing this message, is the really good news is we take in Christ to be the body of Christ and to be the presence for others, not just here, but as we go home, as we go to our work and to our school, as that starts up in a few weeks, all of that to, to say that we don't, we're not just present for Christ in our moment, but for others to be the presence for them. So imagine that as you leave here, there's going to be an extra loaf of bread. And it didn't have many takers physically in the first service. I think there were several that spiritually and mentally were doing so. But I got some extra Jesus here. And when you come to receive Jesus, you can come up then, after you've knelt, or after the service, the bread will still be out. But this bread is not just for us. The communion servers that are serving will serve everyone, and the, as they serve the last group, they'll head off to the nursery to make sure our nursery workers have communion. There will be some that will volunteer, and I haven't gotten all your names, so you tell me after the service, that this communion will go to those that are homebound. That every first Sunday, we don't just receive Christ, we share it with those that are not able to physically be here, and they receive Christ as well. You will become the presence to them as well. You will be blessed to be a blessing to others. And there are loved ones. Maybe you need to take a piece of bread and bring it home. And, you know, that would be awkward. Hey, honey, I know you don't come to church, but I wanted to share Christ with you. Some of you can physically do that. You can take that bread. And you don't need the juice. You can have your own juice or just use the bread. We're talking about the brokenness of this body of Christ. And sometimes we need to be a little more vulnerable with those that we love and say to them, hey, I don't care if you ever come to church because I want to be church for you. I want to bring Christ home to you every time we have communion. Now, some of you will just put it in your pocket. That would be too much for you to, to tangibly hand that to your loved one. But you know there are many other ways. Ways that we can be in the presence to those that we love. And folks, I'm just talking about the other Christians that don't darken our doors. I'm talking about your friends, your neighbors, those that you can be the presence. Even if you just have the bread in your pocket, you don't really have to take the bread. You can mentally do this. Christ wants you to receive today. And to also be a blessing by being the presence to others as well. So the invitation today is not just for you to receive, but also for us to give in ways that we can be the presence of Christ. So may you be present for Jesus, whether you're a Mary or Martha, however you are, whatever ways that you have delight in the Lord, that you would receive today and that you would be the presence to others as well. Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for all that we will receive today. Lord, we know that this is ordinary bread and ordinary juice, but because of you and your presence, it's extraordinary. Lord, renew our hearts to, to renew that those moments when we, we try to be Martha for you and we've lost the joy. Renew our delight in you as we serve you through serving others. As well as, Lord, renew our hearts when we just want to be present with you. Help us to do so. Help us, Lord, to grow as the body of Christ that you've called us to be. 
to be the presence to others as well. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to wait on our song and singing uh, for our hearts to be the sanctuary after communion. Skip the Elias. We continue our worship this morning as we join together at the Lord's table in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We will be utilizing a service of word at table number two, beginning on page 12 in your hymnal. If you're visiting with us this morning, we invite you to participate with us in this holy sacrament. In the United Methodist Church, this table is open to everyone. This is not Pastor Owen's table. It's not Bishop Sue's table, but the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was crucified, after the Passover meal, Christ gave a new invitation. Take and eat. Drink from this, all of you. There was no, all of you, if you are of a certain denomination, or if you are of a certain age, or if you are a certain ethnicity. There were no ifs in this invitation. The group gathered around the table that night was as diverse as we are this morning in this congregation. There was Matthew, the former despised tax collector. Andrew, no older than many of the youth in our youth group. There was Judas, who would shortly turn Jesus over to be dead, to be killed. And Peter, who before the cock crowed, would well deny Jesus, but of whom Jesus had previously spoken, upon this Petros, upon this rock, I will build my church. We will ask the choir to come first to be served, and then ask you to come as you are able. The ushers will guide you forward by the aisle toward the center of the section in which you are seated. At the rail, you may kneel as you are able. You will be served a portion of bread, which you may either dip in the common cup or receive the individual cup, which will be available. Upon Pastor Owen's dismissal, please return to your seat by the aisle on the outside of your section. If you are unable to come forward to receive the elements, please let an usher know and we will serve you with you. Now hear the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this as often as you do this in remembrance of me. After the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He shared it with his disciples and he shares it with us as well. And says, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We share in this and remember because Christ said, do this in remembrance of me. And so we remember all that Christ has done and all that we are invited to this table. It's not what you know or what you've done. 
but it is what Christ knows and what Christ has done that we are invited to this table. Let us pray. Lord, we ask as you bless these elements and with your presence we ask, Lord, that you allow us to receive them. Help us to become the body of Christ as you need us to be. Guide us in our hearts towards you and towards one another in ways that we truly lift you up. Let us be your people and receive you in such a way that we can continue to give abundantly to others as well. Your grace, your truth, your love. Let it be so, Lord, as we receive today. In Jesus' name. I've asked our communion stewards to leave the bread uncovered. Uh, I have a tradition in uh, the churches I have served that the children are welcome to come forward and get more Jesus if they need more Jesus. You are welcome all ages to do so and to also share the presence of Christ with others that you meet today and throughout your week. Certainly, if you would like to be one of those that reaches out to one of our homebound, please let me know. I'd like to make sure those that want to receive communion every month can do so with the same bread that we used as we are one body, whether we're able to make it or not. Um, so please hear that. As well as be praying for us this week, Vacation Bible School starts tomorrow. We're very excited about that. Right after this, there's a meeting in the chapel, I believe, um, and uh, some uh, instructions getting ready for Vacation Bible School. But I'd also like to invite you to pray every day from 9 to 1, Monday through Thursday, while Vacation Bible School is going on. You can do that from home. If you'd like to join me here in the chapel, um, we will have a time where you can just come free, uh, it's come and go time of prayer. Um, there'll be busy, noisy uh, area. I hope that it will be so noisy that you'll have a little bit of trouble praying, but we do want to pray over our children that will be here uh, and help them to experience the presence of Christ as well. And we invite you to pray, and you might just get pulled into one of the activities, and that would be wonderful for us to share in that together, uh, not only with our children, but into the life of this community. Hear this blessing as we close with our closing song, is to know that we are to be present. Christ has called us to be present with Him and with each other. Let us do that the best we can, whether we are Martha's or Mary's, and go with the calling to be the presence of Christ as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.